welcome back to The Sesh. I'm Kendall Ray. And I'm Janelle. Thank you for joining us for another episode. We are very appreciative that you're here today. Mm -hmm. Um, We first off wanted to start off this podcast by thanking our sponsors. We have three of them, Magic Spoon, Tushy, and Purple. Thank you guys for sponsoring the show. We greatly appreciate it. Yes, we do. And we also appreciate everyone for being patient with us. The last week, we did not post an episode and we didn't post an episode for all of our shows in the last week because we did, not. We did a complete studio revamp. Yes, we did. Well, pretty much. We did a we got kind new of. sound. Hopefully it sounds better to you guys. We were having all kinds of audio issues. My mic yes. especially kept cutting in and out. Yep. So we got that, I think, figured out. Yeah. I edited uh Mile Higher yesterday and the audio sounded way better. And hopefully yes. it continues that way. Fingers crossed. Because yeah. it's been a little crazy. <laughs> It has. This year's just like everything goes wrong. Everything. Yeah. It's like Mercury retrograde all the time. All year. All the time. It. We were talking about earlier, it almost feels like, I don't know how many of you listened to that episode of Mile Higher where we talked about, um, which what did we talk about in that episode? It was an Egyptian episode, but I can't remember the topic. Was the it Egyptian? just Tutankhamun? Oh, blowing the horn and King stuff. King Tut, yeah. Someone, I don't remember exactly like what it was, but there was this yes. like sacred ancient horn that was like discovered and then hadn't been blown in forever and the last time they did all these terrible things happened and then recently they blew the horn right before 2020 right before so Mm. do you think maybe that's it kendall's like they shouldn't have blown the damn horn i keep thinking about the horn i keep going back to the horn every time something bad happens i'm like that (laughs) fucking horn but anyway um so yeah we also and just in our personal lives it's been a little crazy in the past week we're gonna give you guys a little personal update today yeah things have just been a little wild which i know that a lot of you guys can relate. Uh, everyone's personal lives are, mm-hmm. I think, affected in some way or another. Like, I don't know anyone who hasn't been affected some way by this year in like mm-hmm. a kind of a weird negative sense. It's just and it's whether hard. it's the pandemic or something else, yeah. there's people that I feel like so many people have just having are having bad luck, bad communication, relationship issues, whatever it is outside of dealing with this pandemic it just feels like the vibes are off the energy is off for everybody it does i mean i'm sure some people have had a good year but personally i just feel like ugh. and i'm always expecting things to go wrong lately like in business and i know it's just i feel like we (laughs) iron out one wrinkle and then like 80 more Mm -hmm. wrinkles appear i'm like wait but yeah i don't have any more time to iron Mm -hmm. like please help Mm -hmm. me (laughs) yeah i i feel like a lot of people are feeling very stressed and overwhelmed especially going into the holiday season that's why we thought today we would have a little holiday fun oh yeah you know that we have the next two episodes before christmas where we're going to have our special little christmas tree that we picked out we're really proud of it we got special ornaments for the sesh Mm -hmm. they're like rainbows and look like little candles really cute things so we're going to decorate our tree during this episode. We're going to even do a tiny bit of Christmas movie trivia yes. that I found at TJ Maxx the other day. <laughs> and we're also going to talk React. about some spicy. Yes, we do have some good spicy. Yes. yes. And we also are going to be reacting to some of your unpopular opinions that you have submitted on Instagram and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys said some good ones. Which if you're not following us, follow us at the underscore sesh podcast. That's where we mm-hmm. actually, this is the second episode where you guys um, got your like feedback and opinions, yeah. I guess. And so we've been really enjoying um, using that as a platform to get to know you guys mm-hmm. and connect with you. And we want to continue to do that. So definitely follow us. That's a great point. Also, we might even do some advice episodes in the future yes. and we might be doing that through social media. I don't know if we'll make a form or do social media but yeah, either know. way follow us so that you can be part of the episode if you are you know interested yeah. in hearing our feedback on something and also stay up to date on like if we do have to miss a week or something that's where you'll figure it out um is on our social media mm-hmm. um like we did last week but yeah we really do appreciate you guys um being patient with us while we got our audio figured out and also like kendall had mentioned we have just been going through some weird personal stuff mm-hmm. um should we go ahead and get into that yeah go for it okay so let's see the on thanksgiving morning actually Mm -hmm. uh, i got a call from my one of my best friends um from college i met her in college and we've stayed really close since Mm -hmm. um and she informed me that the day before so that wednesday she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and uh she it's it's i'm gonna try and pronounce it it's they believe meningioma um, they're not a hundred percent sure of what kind it is until they go in to do the surgery, which is in a few weeks, actually like 10 days from now and we're filming mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I believe that 90%, if it is this type of tumor that they think it is, 90% of them are benign, which is great news. Um, but it was pretty shocking because she's yeah. only 25. She's really healthy. Um, she does have endometriosis, which I'll, I'm kind of curious if any of you guys like have maybe experienced um, endometriosis. She thinks that it might be the hormone replacement that she's had to take that because of her endometriosis that's causing it. Like a progesterone yes, supplement. Yes, progesterone supplement. She's been on like, yeah, fake hormones for years now to help with her symptoms of endometriosis, which she has pretty severe. And so they believe that it, that could have caused the tumor. They're not sure, of course. Mm -hmm. And they're going to test kind of like what the tumor is made out of once they get it out. But I'm curious if any of you have dealt with something like this or, um, you know, if there's any advice you could give us or even just thoughts and prayers. It's like cringy yeah. as that saying is, but like, mm -hmm. I do believe in the power of like healing energy positive and thoughts. positive thoughts. And if you Vibes. pray and yeah. sending love. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is. I believe in that too. It's pretty big. I'll put a picture on the screen. She told me to put this on here it was her idea. So I have yeah. full permission from her. But um, if you're listening, it's about the size of a golf ball or like cutie orange, mm -hmm. if you know what that is. So it's it's pretty big. Closer um, to the cutie. Yeah it's, it's yeah. it's pretty big. And it's the problem is it's pressing on her optic nerve, which is how she found out about it. And that's also why we want to talk about it is this yeah. is something that can happen to other people, obviously. And you never think when you're young that you're going to deal with something like this, but yeah. she was literally just putting on eyeliner for a date, um, a couple, a day or two before Thanksgiving. And when she closed one of her eyes, she felt like she couldn't see out of the other one. Yeah. And it's because this tumor is pressing on her optic nerve yep. and causing a blind spot. Yeah. So if she didn't see that, I mean, who knows how long this could have continued to grow. And yeah. she started experiencing symptoms over the summer, like really bad headaches out of yeah. nowhere, which is, a, I think, a good thing to remind people, you know, especially if you are also on progesterone or any type of hormones yeah. and stuff, because who knows? And of course, we don't know if we that's don't the know. cause. Yeah, it could not be. But her doctors but think that it could that it be. could definitely be related to that. Um, so yeah, she it sucks. It, it's, it's just very scary, and it's been very hard for Janelle because this is her very close friend. If you guys didn't know, Janelle and I, when we were in college, we were in a sorority, and she joined when Janelle joined when I was a junior, and this friend also joined in Janelle's class. So mm -hmm. I didn't get to know her super well. I've actually got to know her probably better even through you post college, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is your very, very close friend, best friend. Yeah. And it's extremely scary and it's been hard on you. Yeah, it has. And I don't want to be like, oh, it's hurt on me. Cause like, I'm not the one with mm -hmm. a brain tumor, but, um, but it's, it's just watching knowledge. her yeah. go through this. And like, she's been so incredibly brave. I, I genuinely don't know how she's done it. I would be a complete remarkably brave. basket case. I'm just, and her family is just so brave and supportive and they're in such high spirits. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm very confident that, that the surgeon she's picked is yes. really going to do a great job um, mm -hmm. with this. And I'm confident that it is benign and that she will be just fine from this um, because she's just, yeah, she's, she's just so, such so a strong. Wonderful she's person just too. literally like one of the best people yeah, ever. Truly. And I can't believe it's happened to her. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's, it's really crazy. And it really just puts things into perspective that like, anything can happen at any time. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you just, you don't know, like you could be the healthiest, you could be young, you could be this, that, and the other. And that doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything, so. Yeah, that's that's so true. And being just aware of your body and your yeah. health, kind of doing a little scan on yourself yeah. sometimes is good. And when something's abnormal, it's so good that she went in. Yeah, know? she's really lucky because she actually works at a hospital. Yes. Um, she lives in Omaha, and so she works at a hospital, and she went into work that day and was like, I can't really see out of my left eye. And they were like, uh, that's that's not great. Let's send you <laughs> down to another floor and get mm -hmm. you an MRI. And they were able to get her one that day. And then within three hours, they called her and gave her the news. So it was, I can't even imagine getting that, like literally going from having nothing wrong as far as you know to all of a sudden in a few hours like oh yeah you have a very large brain tumor so but anyways she's strong and a badass and i know she's gonna get through it um but yeah if you guys do pray or send thoughts and love and healing energy or whatever i'm sure she would really appreciate it and i know that we would yeah absolutely so yeah it's yeah. just it's like just been that that year like so many weird things happening yeah I couldn't um, believe it when she called me. I thought she was going to be like, I'm moving back to Colorado. I know. <laughs> no, that's yeah, not that would have been nice. Although she is getting surgery here. Yeah, she is. She's going to be here for a while. Um, so, yeah. yeah we love her. We do. Shout out to 
Yeah, we shout know out to you. Who if, she is. Yeah, if you're listening, I love you so much, and you're, you're gonna, gonna do great. This, yeah. But anyways, um, should we go ahead and get into some spicy? Yes. And also, we're decorating our tree. If you're listening, we have a cute little tree, like we said, cute little ornaments. Mm. We need some joy in our lives here. I so know, we really do. It's kind of hard to celebrate Christmas right now. Doesn't it feel like... Oh, it's so weird. You know, like everyone's feeling a little grinchy. Yeah. Well, this morning I looked at my phone. I was like, when is Christmas? And I was like, oh my God, it's the week before... Or well, the week after next. I was like, mm-hmm. literally, we have this week, one more week, and yep. it's Christmas week. Yep. Oh, I haven't done like any of my Christmas shopping yet. Because I just like... No. I don't know. It's been... It has been such a weird year. And I feel like I'm still at the beginning of the year. The fact that 2020 is almost over, I'm like, obviously, like, thank God. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm like, where'd the year go? I know. It's (laughs) like a weird mix between the two where Mm -hmm. I feel like, oh, I'm so excited for this year to end. It felt like forever. But also, it really felt like last Christmas, like yesterday. It did. So it's been, yeah, it's been odd. And I think that's because we haven't had these normal markers that we have of holidays and family events and birthdays. And so it kind of feels like time's just been standing still. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's a weird year. And knowing that like, we may not be able to see our families. My sister has had COVID this year. My dad has had COVID this year. So I haven't really spent time with any of them. I didn't see any of them for Thanksgiving and Mm -hmm. you know, it sucks, but it's kind of like, it's just one, hopefully it's just one year. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell myself. Like, you know, it's not like, Oh, this is how it is forever. Like, yeah, it does suck. But if we can just do this for one year and a year from now, we can be planning such a great big holiday un uh, social distance party that yeah. would be great i don't know i know some of you yeah. want to keep social distance and we'll talk about that later but yeah just the idea of like a year, a year from now hopefully we can mm-hmm. like do this without feeling like worried about it yes. or you know so we have a big christmas party at yeah. janelle's dad's house every year on christmas eve we do and it's something we look forward to every year yeah. it's probably my favorite day of the year it's so fun <laughs> it's really We've been fun doing it for like yeah. God, since I can remember. Yeah. And we all just like, there's like long old vlogs of it from mm-hmm. your, on your channel. I know. It's pretty lit time, but it's really not fun. Our whole family like lets loose. Everyone drinks a lot. Yeah. It's just a really fun time. <laughs> it is. And it's just kind of nice to check in with everybody at it the is. end of the year that I don't see all year. Yeah. People who've been at college. That's the other thing is like, yeah. it's obviously, it's not really an excuse because we can like call up people and FaceTime. Well, and, but yeah. it's like so not the same as just no. like being able to be like, hey, how's it going? Like sitting mm-hmm. down, like. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I Do you ever know. feel like you can't, if someone asks you how you have been over text that you don't even want to like get into no. it? Cause you're like, what am I going to type how I've right. been this year exactly. out? Exactly. It's like the typical, like, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Yeah. Like <laughs> everyone's so drained. I know everyone's so drained. Well, it's like, I don't know. I'm doing as good as I can be, I guess, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that's how, it but everything is so bit. relative because you know, people have it so much, so much harder than I am. And I'm really, really so beyond grateful mm-hmm. that I have been able to keep a job and to keep my health mm-hmm. and um, that I, I, you know, don't have kids to feed that I have to worry about, you know, totally. making sure they go through school and stuff. So I am not it's saying like, oh, well, it's me kids. at all. Like I'm mm-hmm. incredibly blessed and, and grateful. Absolutely. Um, I agree but, too. Yeah. And I'm so glad my, my family's going to be okay. My dad yeah. had really minimum symptoms. He's pretty much over COVID now. Um, but yeah, it's scary. It is. It is. It's not fun no, at all it's not but anyway what do we have as far as spicy topics this week which by the way guys we still don't have a soundboard I know. So we still don't have our spicy button I'll do i'm it. very sad spicy. <laughs> that was pretty good just press my hand when you want me to spicy. nice i like it okay <laughs> well janelle can just be our soundboard for right now but we probably will have one next week i think joel josh's brother's gonna come and set it up today so yeah, yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed crossed. we have it for next time but our first spicy topic is yeah wait spicy oh, sorry, button hit me. over here spicy <laughs> floyd mayweather and logan paul oh yes i'm so happy to see this i've been rooting for this for a long time i know time. you have i'm Even like, like yes. weeks ago you told me about this bring it on yeah maybe months ago <laughs> logan paul has been pushing for a fight with floyd May- mayweather for a minute yeah because he, he knows it's gonna boost his fucking career oh, so much yeah oh yeah the publicity uh, you're getting just for fighting floyd well if you haven't heard it's official they are fighting in a match on february 20th <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it really is just like, I can't help but laugh. Like, Kendall was like, should we buy the show and watch it? And I was like, I think we should. I kind of <laughs> want to buy the pay per view because yeah. here's the thing it goes up by like 10 or 20 bucks every month or two. I was watching you Philip DeFranco talk about buy it. it. I know. So it's like, if I want to get it now, it's like 50 bucks versus like 90 in February or something <laughs> stupid. And I kind of want to commentate on it, but I don't want to yeah. support Logan Paul in this whole I know. Like, I know. I can't imagine how much. 
but money I think they're gonna make be funny oh it's going like it's to gonna be, be hilarious, hilarious. it's yeah. gonna be amazing i mean if you're not aware <laughs> floyd mayweather is like basically yeah. the greatest uh boxer in the entire mm-hmm. world i would say he's got a 50 to 0 record as in he's never been defeated that's insane and logan paul's very confident that he's gonna be yeah, the one to do so it confident. <laughs> dude what if we're wrong though like wouldn't that that would change the game if he won Oh, that would oh be like, I was talking to John ooh. about that yesterday. If he, ch- okay, so if let's say that Logan Paul beats Floyd, not saying it's likely, but what if, and like, so does that make him arguably one of the best um, boxers like already? Like he's ha- he's barely you know in his career, but like he beat if Floyd. You beat the best. Like if you beat the best, if you beat someone who's n- like never been beat. Are you the know. are you automatically like one of the best? He couldn't even beat KSI though. So like yeah. what are the chances? Yeah. Well, I guess last month uh Floyd called out Logan Paul on Twitter and he said that he wasn't the one for the kid games. And then <laughs> um of course he responded and was like, you know it doesn't bother me. At the end of the day, he's like five foot four, so he's actually the little kid here and obviously just wants attention. Uh-huh. He's fifty something years old. He should be in retirement. So he just wants to get relevancy <laughs> again by talking about the, you know, YouTube kids because we're the ones popping off right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. You're the one who wants to do it. I know, right? seriously it's ridiculous um yeah he's been talking mad shit yeah he really has very brave but i don't know <laughs> what if he beats him i doubt it john yeah. was like he will not beat him janelle i was like what if he does though <laughs> i know <laughs> like honestly i'm not surprised by anything these days no it really could not. happen and if you don't know who logan paul is by the way yeah. he's a really um he was like a viner for a while and now he's like <laughs> oh huge. yeah that is where he started yeah, that's where he started where'd you first see him I actually didn't really know he existed until the um, Japanese forest. Oh, that was in, your introduction. Yeah, that whole thing, which if you don't know, he filmed a dead body in a forest in Japan <laughs> and know. put it on YouTube. I know. But, you know, maybe if, if for know. some reason you forgot. I don't know. Yeah, it's not a lot. La- I wasn't laughing at what he did. I was oh, laughing because no. Janelle said if you, <laughs> if didn't you don't know. know. <laughs> Most people know that. Right. Well, yeah. I guess you're right. Some people may not know that. And good. F- honestly, good for you. Sorry that we told you. because yeah. It's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I first got introduced to him when he used he was pretending that he was colorblind. Oh, God. And he like finally put on or I think maybe he is colorblind. No, I'm, I'm pretty, sure, pretty he faked sure he faked it. it. I'm almost positive. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> he put on the colorblind glasses to watch the sunset and he was like crying. Was that like, is so is terrible. This fucking guy? OK, when I saw that, I didn't know who he was. And I was like, wow, that's so sweet. And I, I remember like tearing up with him. And then I figured out it was a hoax. And then I figured out it was Logan Paul. And I put all the pieces together. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, wow. You were hoaxed by a Paul. I was hoaxed by the Pauls. <laughs> well, I think I saw it through age three before I even saw oh. it. So I didn't have the opportunity to be hoaxed. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather was retired at one point, but he came out of retirement 2017 to UFC star Conor McGregor. The next year he bought he he fought kickboxer Tension. I have no idea how to say his last name. Yeah, I'm sorry. No idea. I don't know anything about UFC, to mm-hmm. be honest. Same. Um but Floyd Mayweather uh okay he's gonna be coming out of retirement once again once for again. logan paul which i guess maybe he's not retired anymore now he's just like seems to be fighting people again he's like i'm fully back in yeah uh, that's <laughs> it's just amazing i'm like is he doing this for people to talk about him again i don't know what it is and you know philip defranco was kind of touching on how this really isn't a win for him at all it's a big win for logan paul either yeah, way whether win he wins him, or though. loses because they're gonna make so much fucking money it's right. gonna get so much publicity but if anything this could hurt Floyd May- Mayweather. Yeah. I mean, and if he were to lose to him, that would really be embarrassing. Can that you would imagine? Be insane. But There's like we like, said, <sighs> very unlikely that that will happen. But we'll see. We'll see. What we if he does? See. God, he's going to regret know. it. He's like, should have kept in retirement. That's why people are going to tune in. He loses against Logan Paul. Yeah, that'd be a really shitty way to like end your career, right? I mean, Logan Paul's life would change instantly if he was oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm the only one on earth to have beat. Uh-huh. Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. His life's going to change instantly just from doing yeah, this. Like true. just from fighting him, the amount of people that will now know about him and yes. tune into this. People from, yeah, who would have never known of him mm-hmm. otherwise mm-hmm. just because his name is attached to the great. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. I'm just surprised he honestly agreed to this because like I said, Logan Paul has been trying to get this fight for a while now. He's been going off on Hollywood fix, like <laughs> talking about how he's just going to be the shit out of Mayweather <laughs> and stuff. And I'm just surprised he actually got the fight. I mean... Logan, like, seems to, these Paul guys set their minds to me and they just, just like, do, do it. it. I mean, in a sense, like, I'm not saying it's it's good, but it's yeah. like, 
they're i feel like they manifest they like believe in yeah totally because they just keep like going for shit they like know. will not go away they will not go <laughs> away here, here they can't first. be defeated these no, people really cannot can't. go away no it's true they still like he still pulls in views he's still even though everything he did and like so many people but i don't know maybe he's changed a lot since then i don't really know so should we commentate on that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> should be the worst commentary ever done that'd but be amazing be yeah i was gonna say um i don't know anything about fighting i mean i don't think we can like do it on the show or anything no we literally yeah. like watch it it's gonna be locked down yeah we might have to do like a live stream of us <laughs> reacting it could be fun to it. i don't know it's still pretty expensive though i don't know if i want to pay for it i know it's kind of like <laughs> but what if he wins i don't know it that would be, be historic wild. this i mean the fight's gonna be like kind of historic either that's way. what i'm saying like, <laughs> this is crazy. so weird i can't believe this is happening the world is insane it is it is okay speaking of the world being insane Mm -hmm. well hopefully things get so everyone's talking about how is 2021 going to be better than 2020 a lot of people always are acting like oh we just need to end this year but i feel like so many people keep reminding us that and reminding everyone that you know how much is really going to change yeah all of a sudden oh the clock Clock strikes strikes 12 yeah (laughs) everything's fine no that's not how it works i don't know i mean i have hopes that there will be you know, oh, that everyone will be able to be vaccine in 2021. That would be huge. Um, if, well, yeah, I guess I know that's a little bit controversial, but I would like to get vaccine and I hope that we can maybe get the pandemic, you know, under control. That would be really great. But I don't know if like, just because, yeah, the, the year's changing. I don't, I don't think it's fair to be like, everything's going to be great just because, Mm-mm. you know, the 20, because 2020 is finally over. And I've kind of had to like, tell myself that because for a while i was like i just need to get through this year and i'm like well dude you can't have like crazy expectations for the next year like Mm -mm. this pandemic is going to be here for a while until it's like you know quote back to normal well i feel like 2021 is going to be a lot of recovery for us you know we're going to be getting used to a new normal and that's our next one of our next topics here is Mm -hmm. about vaccination passports Mm -hmm. and how the world's going to change like how's our travel routines going to change i personally haven't been on a plane since the pandemic i know some people have had to travel for Mm -hmm. you know serious reasons or whatever so i have no idea what it's like now i mean i don't know what the airport's like or what's being on an airport airplane is like Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah i don't know i know of a few people who have like traveled out of pure necessity and they've all kind of said that it's it's pretty like streamlined at this point as in like they're pretty cautious with sanitization. I know different airlines do different things. They have different protocol, but yeah, it's true. Like how long will we be taking these extra precautions or is this just like how it's going to be? Like, are we mm-hmm. going to be much cleaner humans because of this? Yeah. <laughs> how Maybe. long is it going to be also until we can actually travel, you know, even legally until yeah. we're allowed into other countries as oh, Americans, yeah. because oh, there's yeah. a lot of people who are like, don't set come in for us. Right yeah, now. Well, because obviously we haven't handled this very responsibly. No, <laughs> at all. So I understand why other countries are like, please get your shit together before you come. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to do it? Yeah. So, you know, speaking of other countries, the UK and um, other European countries have set up a vaccination card that will likely become popular in the next year. Um, as we move slowly, you know, to reopening and trying to get things back to normal. And on December 2nd, the Department of Defense released the first image of the COVID-19 record and vaccination kits that are going to be, you know, it's kind of a talk of like, are we going to be carrying mm-hmm. around these little cards, and these little, yeah. you know, pr- proof of vaccines? Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes me wonder, will like, you know, events mm-hmm. and stuff require vaccination records or stores or stores or employers yeah yeah yep exactly i'm I'm very curious to see what that's gonna look like and you know one thing that i think this kind of brings up is this really does if okay let's say that everyone in america is now required to have a vaccine card if you want to do x y and z if you Mm want to be able to you know do whatever you want to do you need to have a vaccine so then that should theoretically mean that if you're requiring everyone to have a vaccine, then you should allow the vaccine to be free and, you know, mm-hmm. accessible mm-hmm. to everyone, point blank, simple, like n- no ifs, ands, or buts. If this, and this kind of opens the door to universal health care in a sense of like, you know, if we're requiring everyone to have this vaccine, then you should make sure that it's easily accessible to everyone and free. Yeah, I think if you're going to require it, it should be free. And so like... You know, if it's like, oh, well, employers are now allowed to not hire you because you don't have a specific vaccine. 
Yeah, I know. There's it, a lot of things that are like very questionable. It gets very questionable. So I don't mean, I'm not trying to like tell you guys what to think. It's just kind of an interesting thing to think it about is. of like, are we going to have to carry around these little cards for a while? Is this going to be, you know, something that every time you get on a plane or whenever you book your flight, you have to like send in a picture of your vaccine card. I don't know. Oh, that's so weird. That could be something too. like upload your, <laughs> mm-hmm. I wonder if they'll have like QR codes to like, yeah, because aren't people going to just make fake ones? How do we prove that they're real? I have no idea. I have no idea. (laughs) Vaccination clinics, I guess, will be reporting to their state immunization registers or registries. Um, And many places are going to ask for a phone number so they can send text messages telling them about when and where their next dose is scheduled to be given. Because that's the other thing. Oh, we have to get more than one dose? I think there's three doses, I think. Stop. Seriously? Um, I did not know that. Yeah, I don't know. It's like the HPV vaccine, kind of. So the two main companies... Fitzer and uh, Moderna, I think, are the, the two of mm-hmm. them um, that are, you know, front running for the vaccine, at least. Um, uh, supposedly, if both companies win the emergency use authorization, which is kind of what we're going for now, is in like getting these out in emergency situations, basically, like get them out quick, get them out to everyone. Um, I guess if they're authorized to do that, they can distribute 40 million doses by the end of this month. Whoa. Which is this a month, lot. December? Yeah. Whoa, I did not realize it was going to be that soon. But of course, you know, like not everyone who wants one is just going to like go in and get one. I think they're going to give them to people who need them the most, like healthcare workers and Mm -hmm. um, like older people, people with um, pre existing conditions, et cetera, et cetera. So, anyways, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not three doses, by the way, it's two doses. The oh, vaccine, okay. which okay. kind of complicates things even more because yeah, that's it does. really hard to make sure everyone gets their mm-hmm. two doses. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know crazy times we're living in it is but our last spicy topic press my spicy button spicy (laughs) this isn't really that spicy honestly that's just great news honestly (laughs) yeah i love this and uh what's this article on actually it's like a little thing on twitter that we found it's titled baby boomers nah pandemic pets (laughs) that's what we are uh, looking at today folks pandemic obviously has done a lot of terrible things but one thing that it's done wonderful is pets are being Mm -hmm. Uh, rescued and adopted like none other but they're also becoming more expensive because of the demand is way up uh, that's which so is great though that's awesome it's amazing that's like so great to hear that the demand is higher than the supply like so when does that ever happen why do you think that is probably because people are like oh i'm gonna be home yeah. for a while i can i mean we both got new dogs during yeah. this this <laughs> pandemic yep. oh yeah oh you and did too Sydney, yeah. yep yep running our cameras yes and I think honestly, that's a great reason because people are staying home, (laughs) but also because I think people's mental health is really being put at a test right now. And Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people are looking towards animals to for like some relief because it's hard to get relief when you aren't supposed to leave your house and this, that and the other. And so that's so true. And I think people also know it's a way to give back because some of the shelters are overwhelmed. I know at first they were and they were really trying to get the word out about that. Yes. So I don't know if it's I guess it's improved if they've had to make the prices higher yeah definitely That's good news yeah well i guess um the average cost of the dog was up 131 percent in the third quarter of 2020 now this is from um the uk i believe and the average cost of the cat was up 42 percent. so yeah it's not just dogs it's also cats and rabbits and yes. rodents that's awesome. Yes. Love it. And this is so cute, but Cocker Spaniel saw the biggest <laughs> increase at 207% higher sales. Love that. Jack hmm. Russell's were up there. It's so amazing. I wonder why why are Cocker, Cocker Spaniels in? Did some celebrity get a Cocker Spaniel? And now everyone needs one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like. <laughs> I don't know. Who got a Cocker Spaniel? That's a very good point. They're very cute dogs. God, oh my cute. gosh. Yes, I love Cockers. So cute. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, people are willing to pay more because the demand is higher and there's kind of a shortage, which is great. I love the fact that there's a quote shortage of adoptable animals. That's amazing. And usually does not happen. Um, and yeah, chewy sales, this is funny, are up 150%. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I'm sure they're funny. loving it. Well, a lot of people are also probably buying pet food and stuff from their house versus going to PetSmart, Walmart, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dogs, cats, horses seem to provide the most comfort. Um, but the emotional bond felt with birds and guinea pigs, you know, wasn't far behind either. So like I said, it's not just dogs and cats. It's pet boom. Pet boom, which is so cool. Love that so much. But it says one danger of the pet boom is what could happen is, you know, employment continues to go down or an economic crisis. And some people may be forced to part with their pets. 
Um, but thankfully, they say that there are few signs of this happening as of right now. So yeah. so yeah, let us know if any of you have gotten pets during this pandemic. I'm really curious, you know, dogs, cats, bunnies, anything. Mm-hmm. What animals did you get if you got any? And are you enjoying them? And was it because of the pandemic that you got this pet? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah. And yeah, send us pictures too. We always love yes. pictures to our social medias. Yes, please send see us pictures. Pets. They're so cute. They make us happy. The underscore slash mm-hmm. podcast. Yes. Um, and we have a little Christmas trivia today too yes. that we are going to get into in a second. I thought this was it. This is not it. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Sydney has it. Sydney's here and she's going to be doing some Christmas trivia when yes. we come back from a quick word from our sponsor for today. Yes, Magic Spoon. So growing up, you guys, cereal was something that I loved, especially sugar cereal. It was my favorite thing to have in the morning, um, especially like on weekends and stuff. But now, you know, when I'm growing up and as an adult, I don't need to be like binging bowls of sugar cereal, but I still need that satisfaction once in a while, especially Mm -hmm. late at night. That's like my new thing is sugar cereal at night. (laughs) Like, mm. Love it's that better so much. at night, I think. It's better at night. I agree. And with Magic Spoon, you can enjoy sugar cereal without the guilt of just shoving sugar down your throat. Because <laughs> this uh, cereal, you guys, has zero grams of sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net carbs in each serving. And oh my gosh, the packaging, if you're watching, it's so freaking cute. It's the cutest packaging of cereal that exists it's in the world. It's <laughs> literally so cute. I'm obsessed that all of them look a little bit different. They have four flavors, mm. cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. They taste amazing. They do. They're keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free, everything free, pretty much. They're so delicious. Um, I personally really love the blueberry one. That's my favorite. I like the fruity. You like the fruity? I like the fruit loops. Very nostalgic. Yes, so delicious. Um, But yeah, guys, you should definitely check this out. If you're looking for something to satisfy that sweet tooth of, you know, eating sugar cereal, but not wanting to um, have the guilt of it, if you will, I would definitely recommend Magic Spoon. And right now, if you go to magicspoon.com slash sesh to grab a variety pack and try it today, um, you can get free shipping. Again, that is magicspoon.com slash sesh, or you can use code sesh at checkout for free shipping and magic spoon is so confident in their product it's backed um, with 100 percent guarantee of happiness and if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked that's magicspoon.com slash sesh and use code sesh for free shipping so our next sponsor is tushy tushy thank you for sponsoring if you have not heard of tushy it is the best i mean do you have a butthole because if you do guys this ad is for you okay it is (laughs) So it's hard to believe that when we go to the bathroom in this country, most of us wipe instead of wash. And for years, bidets have been available, but really, really expensive, Mm -hmm. costing thousands of dollars. It's like kind of bougie, you know, it's not for the average folk. My grandma had a really nice bidet in her house. I used to like play with it when I was a kid. Of course you did. It's like a fountain. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks to Hello Tushy, the modern bidet attachment is here to democratize the blessings bestowed by bidets and offer clean buttholes to everyone and it's amazing it you is. guys it really is it really takes your hygiene game up a notch i'm a huge fan of the bidet and tushy it is just wonderful and it's also great for that time of the month ladies i cannot say this enough it comes super in handy yeah during that time as you can imagine you can't you know you, it it works it for that works. <laughs> what she said, you can imagine it. It, it works it's got some good sprayage no it's it really just, does it's really excellent and You feel cleaner. And when you feel cleaner, you feel better. Boom. You feel better. Also, guys, using a bidet like this can really help with, um, you know, you're not using as much toilet paper. We love it. And stuff like that. So it can really save you, um, you know, it can cut toilet paper costs up to 80%, Mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. And helps the environment. Yes. And, you know, that the Hello Tushy cleans your butt with a precise stream of fresh water for just $79. Ooh, bitch. Not that, like, $1,000 bidet that your Mm -hmm. grandma has in the closet. No, it's (laughs) definitely not that. Um, No, it's really awesome. It wasn't a closet. Shut up. (laughs) It was was in its own little, like, bidet closet. Oh, my God. Well, there's an old house. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, No, this is a great product. It's super easy to set up. That's the other thing. It takes like no brain power to set it up. You don't have to have someone come in and install it. It's very, very easy. Mm -hmm. It works on pretty much every toilet that you've got. Yeah. So I definitely recommend. Um, Every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a six day risk free guarantee and a 12 month warranty. So join the millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush go to hellotushy.com slash sesh to get 10 percent off this is a special offer for our listeners so go to hellotushy.com slash sesh for 10 percent off hellotushy.com slash sesh all right it's time for some christmas trivia hell yeah the next two episodes are kind of like a sesh miss Oh, sesh miss. I know. Merry sesh miss. I feel like I want to have a, a sesh miss. Okay. I kind of am jealous of all the like 
Christmas vloggers, all the people who do like, yeah. what's it, Vlogmas. Vlogmas. Sashmas. And they have like a little intro and a song. Oh I my miss God, that. So fun. I want to do that. Okay. So well. maybe next year we'll do Sashmas. So it's all month. But the next two episodes are going to be Sashmas. Hell yeah. And we're going to do some Christmas trivia, which, like I said, I found this in the TJ Maxx checkout. It was like $3. <laughs> so it may not be that good. <laughs> it's for TV and movie trivia related to Christmas. We're going to answer 10 questions. Yep. See each who. episode and we're going to, yeah, we're going to compete. However, I will say, no, but you know your shit when it comes to Christmas movies because mm. Janelle's not a big movie fan in general, but you do watch a lot of Christmas movies. That's You're a big true. fan of the holiday. That's, oh, the, yes, yes, that's very true. Oh, I meant the holiday oh, the ho- is in the holiday, the but yeah, the holiday, the, ho- the movie the too. The holiday, the movie. That's like, oh, I haven't a watched that one, one this, yet, this season yet. I need to do I that. I need to. It's I cry every so time. It's so good. Though. It's so good. If you've never it seen is. the holiday with Cameron Diaz and Jack Black, <laughs> like I'm just like, this is sponsored by the holiday. <laughs> Come on. Every oh. white bitch has seen that movie. Right? <laughs> so exactly. It's so fucking good, you guys. Uh, but yes, I do love a good Christmas movie. So maybe I'll, I'll be okay with this. We'll see. Because usually I'm like terrible at movie trivia because I just don't like movies. But that's for a different time. All right, Sid. So Sydney has the cards so that we can't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> so Sydney, welcome to the show. Yay. Say hi, Sid. She's Hello. back, guys. Hello, here. She's feeling a little nervous because obviously this is kind of a weird thing to do for the first time. So it is. Everyone's first time podcasting <laughs> yeah. is always a little weird. It's weird to hear your own voice. Yes. And to look at yourself. Yes. And to yeah. look at yourself. But That's you also sound cringy. good and you look good. We love to have you. It's good. Okay. All right. Go for it. Put your mic to the to your face, though. There we go. Excellent. Yeah. Like yep. okay. All right. Yes. What's that? Oh, wow. Now I can hear myself. Yes. Yeah. There you go. All right. Two men broke into a house and had a lot of trouble in which movie? <laughs> Duh, Home Alone. Wait, I thought we had to like wait to buzz in. Of course it's Home Alone. Do we need a button? We should okay, just. Okay, a practice one. <laughs> we, practice we need one. the sound button. That's so, for next Ooh. time we play any type of we trivia, need we need a sound, a sound bar or okay. a sound Well, thing. I guess we can just be like, <laughs> forever knows it first. Make a sound buzzer sound. Okay, okay. deal. All right, go. Okay, what present did Harry Potter receive from Hagrid in his first Christmas at Hogwarts? <laughs> A, a magical Christmas pudding. B, a flying carpet. C, a rough cut wooden flute. Okay, Harry Potter is not a Christmas movie, though. That's yeah, so what? unfair. I have no idea. I'm going to pick... I have a I have a guess. Okay. Is it C, a flute? Yes. I was going to say, Harry Potter sounds like the type to be like hanging out with a flute. <laughs> like a wooden flute? He's that's what type to hang out That's what Hagrid would give <laughs> Harry Potter is a flute, not that's a magic true. carpet. The hell? I was going to say the jello. I thought Hagrid would be down <laughs> the with the jello, the pudding. He's like, Harry, eat this pudding, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Just dance while okay. it sounds like. <laughs> Janelle, you got that one. Woo! I'm surprised. Which soft drink is Fuller to- told to go easy on in Home Alone? Oh. A, oh. Pepsi, B, eggnog, C, White Christmas. Eh. Do you know it? I know. No, I don't know. Pepsi. It. Yes, you're correct. Damn, I would have guessed Coke because it's like a Christmas thing. Dang. Pepsi right. and pizza, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuller, the little guy pees mm-hmm. his bed. <laughs> Which Christmas song is the best selling single of all time? A, I wish it could be Christmas every day. B, White Christmas. C, Fairy Tale of New York. Oh, I thought it was going to be Mariah Carey's. All I want. <laughs> Don't even start with that. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Baby, It's Cold Outside. I thought that was the one it was, but... Is it... I have no idea. What were the options? I don't even know those ones. Yeah, what the hell? The options were, I wish it could be Christmas every day, B, White Christmas, C, Fairy Tale of New York. Er, yes. B, White Christmas. Correct. Okay. Good job. That's a classic. <laughs> the is. other two, I don't even know. The other, the first one, uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good song. Mm. It's a bop. Yeah, it's pretty much bop. <laughs> bop. Um, All right. Let me see. Let me see. In which children's series does the appearance of Father Christmas herald the beginning of the end for the White Witch? That's from Narnia, right? The White Witch and stuff. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Wow, you didn't. Even, that was good. What's the question though? Um, in which children's series does the appearance of Father oh, Christmas? That's Christmas the that's herald? the answer. Is Narnia? Yeah, Chronicles. Of Narnia. Oh well. I never, Got it. I never seen that in my life. Kind I saw it with Grammy. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, Grammy likes it. That's yeah. awesome. You guys are tied. Okay. Narnia. Yeah, we are tied. Oh, it's getting shit. crazy. It's getting heated. Might have to throw a few punches. It, I didn't even consider Narnia or Harry Potter like Christmas yeah, huh? related at all. Interesting. I guess it is. Okay, here we go. Which famous comedian played the Grinch in the <laughs> Grinch Stole Christmas? <laughs> Who stole Christmas? <laughs> We're going to have to both get that because we yeah, both know we it's both Jim Carrey. Okay. We both get a point. 
<laughs> All right, we're just going neutral on that. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, that is like the best movie It's ever. on Netflix right now, guys. And I was just reading an article yesterday about how it's like the top streamed movie right As now. As it should be. It is the best. <laughs> it is. It Jim is Carrey's my favorite movie, period. Some and people hate that movie, dude. Well, people have either you know very what? strong opinions either way I know. on that one. People who don't like that movie, I am like so personally offended okay <laughs> your <laughs> opinion makes me so I'm offended so offended <laughs> no i seriously love that movie like i could quote that whole damn film we i know it's really embarrassing <laughs> the rabbit in the magic hat in frosty the snowman is named oh Ooh, damn okay a scut fargus what scut fargus <laughs> <laughs> scut yes scut fargus Hell like yeah. Bart Cuss or something. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, okay. First option. Uh, B, Hocus Pocus. C, Rabbit Claws. Uh, er, is it B? Hocus Pocus? Yeah, you're, yep. Oh, wow. I don't know where that, I don't know wow. how I knew that. Pulled that out of your brain. I pulled that out of my, yeah, pulled out of somewhere. <laughs> okay. Okay, which film follows the lives of eight very different couples in dealing with their love lives before Christmas? A, love authentically. B, love automatically. C, love actually. <laughs> love automatically. <laughs> love actually. Okay. I've never seen that movie, but yeah. You've never seen that movie? No. Okay, I actually have a funny story about that movie. I saw that in like July one time when oh. I was in Florida and I got my really bad ear infection. Remember that? And my family had to leave yeah. me there. Yeah, yeah. And... I don't know what the hell happened, but I was, well, my mom let me shave my legs for the first time okay. while I was there as a special treat because I was so sad about my ear. <laughs> She's like, congratulations. You so, can do whatever woman dreads. Yes, I know. But then I got stubble for the first time. And when I first felt it, I was not into it. And every time I would do it, I, it would make me throw up every time I would touch <laughs> my legs because the medicine I was on from my ear. And I watched all of actually... <laughs> And I got violently sick from that movie because there's like, there's a really serious porn scene. Like there's oh. straight up everything. You see everything. And I was like too young to have seen Your that. It was just was in just my like, grandma's yeah. stash. I don't think they knew I was watching this, oh my God. but it made me like throw up. <laughs> so now every time I watch Love Actually, I get nauseous during that scene. And I think about my legs being stubbly and I like have to shave them. <laughs> it's all thing. <laughs> oh my God. That's just really funny. You need to see that oh movie. I, I think do. you would like it though. No, people say it's really it's good. It's hilarious. Is it? Is. It? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't seen it. It is. Because it's been out for like a long time. Oh, yeah. It's old. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, there Have we go. Have you seen a, like, bad, or bad Mom's Christmas? Oh, my God. Bad Mom's Christmas is I, Yeah, I watched so it the other day, actually. Good. It was really yeah. funny. I could watch it all. Oh, I'm obsessed with it. I love that yeah. movie. <laughs> that was so... The moms and stuff, yeah. Who starred in White Christmas 1954? Okay. A, Bill Crosby. B, Bing Crosby. C, Fred Astire. B, Bing, Bing. Yep. Oh, Bing. Was I in think that. it was Bing. Yeah. I didn't know Bing starred in the movie. Yep. But Bing just sung a song or two. No, Bing or was a big star. Oh, okay. Bing. Okay. What is the first gift of Christmas according to the Polar Express? A, a ribbon from Santa sleigh. Uh, shut up! I didn't get to hear the opinions yet. You don't get it. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, fine. Wait. B, a bell from Santa sleigh, and C, a toy from Santa sleigh. Uh, <laughs> What is it? It's a bell. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, but the Polar Express is the worst movie ever. Worst Christmas movie. I'm going to oh, get canceled. I don't like the movie, actually. No, it's I bad. didn't like it. But I I am really into the book and the whole thing. The My dad would read it to us every Christmas Eve, and we would ring our little bell at home. Oh, that's And we'd cute. always be like, oh, we still believe in Santa, because you can only hear the bell ring if you believe in Santa. It's oh, the whole no thing. wonder why. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just did not like the movie. It was like yeah, too I didn't, weird I didn't like the animation in the movie. It like scared me. It like, really bothered me. The only thing that was cool was the that soundtrack. they got a bunch of food on the train. Like, they like, yeah. had little moments. I was going to say the hot chocolate on the fun. train was really fun. Yeah. Uh, fun. Great music too. I like but the dancers. Like the whole like, there was like some scary guy on the roof of the train. Yeah, Didn't like that shit. It wasn't part of the book though. That's there not was in the like, book. I remember watching. I was like, this is some weird shit. Yeah. I maybe I should get into the book. <laughs> okay. Next. Okay. Well, since we're talking about Polar Express, <laughs> um, in the 2004 Disney film, The Polar Express, who provided the voiceover for the young boy who embarked on the magical adventure <laughs> to Santa's workshop. Here we go. A, Peter Scolari. B, Steve Martin. C, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. A. It's definitely Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is the train guy, not the boy. The boy. You know, he was the boy. Oh, he's the boy too? I'm just kidding. That's what it's saying. Wait, Wait stop. It said T Tom Hanks is the boy, or maybe that's why these cards were at TJ Maxx. Wait, maybe they're wrong. What? 
Yeah. <laughs> Tom Hanks played the boy and the man on the train. <laughs> Maybe the he conductor. did. I, yeah, I thought he was the conductor. The conductor. I thought it was yeah. the boy. It says, who provided the voiceover for the young boy who embarked on the magic? And, yeah. and the answer is Tom Hanks. Yeah. That's wrong. What the hell? I'm pretty sure that's confusing. <laughs> who is the voice of the young boy? <laughs> there we go. We have to confirm this because what? <laughs> Tom Hanks actually played like every single wrong. character. No, that's the- wrong. It's Daryl Sabara. Nope. Tom Hanks. <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. Wow. I can't believe they got it wrong. TJ Maxx. Thanks a lot. Oh, this guy. I think he's from Spy Kids. Daryl Sabara. Mm, never seen. Wait. Never seen. Never seen Spy Kids? <laughs> no, nah, never seen oh. a Spy Wait, Kids. Now I'm, I'm seeing it's Dante Pastula. Oh, I can't get confirmation. Who That's is because the voice? it's Tom Hanks? No, Tom Hanks plays every <laughs> single character in that movie. <laughs> okay, no, it's definitely Daniel Daryl Sabara. Tom Hanks from Spy Kids. Okay, anyway, moving on. Thank you for clarification. So we both got that wrong. Big flop. Well, they got it wrong. We got it right. They yeah, got what it wrong. the hell? They got it wrong. Which of these is one of the four main food groups among elves and elf? Hmm. A, candy canes, B, candy floss, C, toffee apples. A. Uh, uh, uh. You keep not buzzing. Sorry, I'm yeah. buzzing. Uh, it's clearly A. a. All right, Janelle's going to get it. She was fast. Thank okay. you. You got a buzz, though. Okay, Next time, sorry. that's an illegal start. <laughs> <laughs> DQ. <laughs> okay. Who starred, in the 19, oh, who starred in the 1951 version of Scrooge? A. Scrooge? <laughs> Scrooge. No. Scrooge. <laughs> Charlton Heston as A. B. Alistar Sim. C. Ebenezer Strange. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to guess A. You didn't buzz in. <laughs> uh, a. No, wrong. Damn. <gasps> Forfeited to Janelle. B. Yes. Yay. That question is shit. Great. Excellent. All right. Is our, our last, last question? One more. All right. Here we go. Okay. okay. This is a tiebreaker, too. Okay, oh, get a good one. shit. Oh, if I, if I get this right, it'll become a tie. Oh, then we tied? Okay. If you win it, it's over. <laughs> get ready. You want an Obama question? Obama? There's Why Obama is Obama in there? Yeah, I want to know what that is. <laughs> okay. What uh, is it? Like the White House Christmas decorating or something? It says, do you want me to read it? Like, Oh, it's really an Obama question. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, I was just here, and I'm curious. Okay. When did the Obamas first share their Christmas message? <laughs> Why is this in there with what? Christmas and t- movie and TV <laughs> trivia? They're like, let's throw an Obama one in there. <laughs> <laughs> their Christmas so message, random. I don't know, 2008 <laughs> when he went in there? <laughs> 2009? There you go. You're right. When oh. he started, wow. Boom, okay, now go. it's a tiebreaker. One more. Okay. Oh, tiebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> In which film does an angel prevent James Stewart's character from committing suicide on Christmas Eve? A. Miracle on 34th Street. B. A Christmas Story. C. It's a Wonderful Life. D. Scrooge. Yes. C. Okay, so I got six. You got five. So I win this week. <laughs> wow, congratulations. You have better holiday spirit. Better <laughs> holiday spirit. <laughs> Seen more movies than you. Yeah, maybe. I know you definitely have. Yeah, Janelle's not super into movies. No, I hate movies. Um, all right, well, we should get into reacting to some unpopular opinions. But before yes. we do so, we want to thank our last sponsor, which is Purple. All right, so we all know it's the season to curl up, sleep in, and get cozy, which means you can't go wrong giving comfy gifts for the holidays. And with Purple, you can give the gift of comfort and great sleep to everyone on your list. Purple is a sleep company that's been innovating comfort for over 15 years with their proprietary Purple Grid technology. Purple's best-selling Harmony Pillow is made with their signature grid and provides absolute airflow. It's the perfect gift to keep giving, and it also really helps you uh, make sure that you're staying cool, um, you know, in the covers. It really does. Because, yeah, you you know, overheating kind of sucks, and Mm -hmm. purple is really helpful with uh, staying cool and stuff. I have to sleep with my purple pillow at night. I love it. Mm. Excellent. I love the, like, grid. It's so unique. It is. No one else really has something like this. Nope, not at all. Wrapping a mattress in purple, silky, soft, breathable sheets will have every sleeper wanting to hit the snooze button even more. Um, so it's not just, you know, uh, mattresses and pillows that they sell. They sell all kinds of really cool um, accessories to help with just overall comfort, especially if you're working from home. Um, they have stuff that really does help. 
And also, if you're, you know, trying to think of something unique to get your kids, Purple does have a kid collection, which is so cool. They have all the essentials for helping them dream big. They'll wake up feeling merry and bright every day, having slept on a super soft, moisture wicking kid sheets. These are awesome. Um, your smaller sleepers won't stir at night when they have the cradling support of the kids pillow, which is made with the same grid technology as the regular pillow. So again, you know, it's perfect for kids. So give the gift of comfort and great sleep with Purple. Go to purple.com slash sesh10 and use promo code sesh10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash sesh10, promo code sesh10. For 10% off any order of $200 or more, again, purple.com slash sesh10, promo code sesh10. Terms apply. All right. So you not liking movies would be a good example of an unpopular opinion. Yes. It's something that the majority of people would probably disagree with, mm-hmm. that you kind of are like the lone rider on, which a lot of people that submitted, I must say, did not really understand what a popular opinion was <laughs> and definitely submitted very popular opinions. Um, but that's OK. I still enjoyed reading them. But I picked out a few that I thought were interesting that I thought maybe we would want to share our insight on okay. and our opinions. Sydney, feel free to chime in yes. if you want to at any point. Yes, let's do it. Okay, let's start. All right, the first one is about Twilight. It says that Bella Swan did have character development. She wasn't the most bland character in the movies. Someone else responded to this and said, Twilight is actually a beautiful movie with an amazing soundtrack and the most interesting love, a lore. It was just shit on because after the first movie, Hollywood ruined all of it, making it trendy to hate on the movie. I so agree with your unpopular opinion. I feel like a lot of people agree with that. I love Twilight. Mm-hmm. I was like a real big... T- I saw the first one in theaters seven times. Seven? Yeah, my mom and I would just be like, we're bored. Let's go see it three times in one day. It was wow. It was like a whole thing. Yeah, That's I saw the, all the rest of them at midnight. Like I... <laughs> and I don't read books, y'all. I read those books. <laughs> I did. I read those books I too. I love Twilight and I'm so sad that people like hate on it and it was all trendy to hate on. I'm like, whatever. Well, I think it's coming back. It is. People, I've been seeing a lot on TikTok and Twitter about Twilight and people just like reliving the glory Good. of that movie because, yes, it was a tad dramatic. They do look funny when they run. Like, that's <laughs> the one thing that kills me is when Edward runs. runs. Yeah. But I agree with that opinion about Bella, too. I don't think Kristen Stewart is a bad actress. No. So people like really do shit on her. Yeah. I don't think it's very fair. No. I think she's unique. Yeah, I do too. And that was also like one of the first real like big jobs she had. She, mm. So I don't know. Like, I think she's definitely unique. And I think she played the role pretty yeah. well. Like people are like, the casting was terrible for like, I saw the movies before the books. So I guess it, I was different in the sense of, like, I didn't have the characters built in my head. Like if oh. you were to have read the book mm-hmm. first, but I really loved it. I thought they did a good job and 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Twilight stan. So clearly we agree with you guys. Yep. Oh, and are you team Edward or team Jacob? Uh, I can't decide. Mm. I think Jacob's hotter though. So I was team Edward the okay. whole time. <laughs> just one enlist. I never really know. got on a team. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just like was really into it because my friends were really into it. We'd go to the premieres and stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. so good. I'd read the books with like the music on. Oh, that was that's really the best, best experience. I love Twilight. <laughs> like Bella's lullaby in the background. Yeah, it's so Real good. Nice. Okay, next one is Ch- Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. is overrated. Do you agree or do you disagree? You know what? I disagree. I disagree too. I don't think it's overrated. I don't think it's overrated at all. I actually love Chick-fil-A and I don't even eat chicken. And I, that's still one of my favorite fast <laughs> yeah, foods because I love their so fries good. so much and their mac and cheese. Mm, Chick-fil-A is delicious. It ain't overrated. Smoking weed doesn't make you a bad mom. So I don't think this is necessarily an unpopular opinion. I don't, yeah. I think a lot of people are coming around when it comes to that. I think you'd almost be in the minority if you agree that it does make you a bad mom. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly don't agree that I don't, I don't think it makes you a bad mom no. at all. Me, don't, me either. No. The cream in Oreos is literally disgusting. Wow, that's a really intense. Um, I think the cream in Oreos is gross too. And every time I lick it out, like separate from the Oreo, I'm not into it. Oh, I'm into it. Really? I don't like Oreos in general. They're kind of like, nah. But what if even I'm gonna eat is it? the cream? Because it's vegan. It's vegan. What the hell? How? I, I think it's just like oil. Ew. I'm pretty sure. And like, it's like Cisco. Sugar. Crisco. Crisco. You mean oh, Cisco. Oh, is it Crisco? Crisco. I think, <laughs> I think Cisco is like a toy brand. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, Oreos are all right. Lines to get into stores can stay post COVID if it means I can shop with room to breathe. 
that's a controversial one. That is an unpopular opinion, I think. But I kind of feel you on that. Like it is low key, pretty nice to have some space when you're shopping. Yeah, I haven't actually experienced waiting in any lines. Um, going I only at, have going to stores, but nowhere else. I don't know. That's just because like where I'm shopping isn't like super populated, or like mm-hmm. they just don't care. Don't we like don't live that. in the city, so yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I really don't like lines. <laughs> Yeah, lines suck, especially when it's cold out. Yeah, when it's cold out. Or like if you have to get something quick. Yeah, like, it's not great for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's a good un- unpopular opinion. Yeah, that is a good unpopular Here's opinion. another one that's definitely unpopular, but you might agree with. The office sucks. The office does suck. <laughs> I agree. And that's unbelievable. What do yeah. you think about The Office, Sydney? Do you like this at The Office? I mean, I can watch it, but it's not like... You gotta, wait, you gotta oh. use the mic. <laughs> my bad. I can watch it, but it's not like anything... Like my favorite. I don't know. You think I, it's overrated? I under, yeah, I don't know. Understand how people like really love it. It's not good. No. no. Sorry. I don't think it's not good. It's so overrated in my opinion. And we can be, not be friends if you. I think it's great. excellent. <laughs> and you have a real sense of humor and a sophisticated sense of humor if you appreciate oh, the office. Okay. Oh, she's, I think it's one of the did best you hear that? shows so of Kendall all time. Is so sof- I am. Sophisticated. Mm-hmm. Put it on your mm-hmm. resume. Mm-hmm. I will. Sophisticated Love bitch that likes the office. the office. I just can't get into okay, it. Okay, here's another one. We definitely agree with this one, but okay. I think this is considered unpopular. Okay. Pumpkin spice lattes are gross. They are. They are. They're we not both good. agree. They're gross and they taste like candles. I think a lot of people... <laughs> candles, that's interesting. Someone said hot dogs. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I can kind of see dog. that. Like, next time I try Shut one of those, up. which probably will be never, um, it, I'm going to see if it tastes like hot dogs. Hot dog. Ew. Smoking out of a bowl is superior to smoking a joint. I, I agree. Don't have an opinion on this. I think that's a popular opinion. You don't have an opinion? You think joints are equal no, to I'd, bowls? Uh, yeah I think they're equal yeah they're equal disagree with that (laughs) okay here's another one this one is very spicy if churches are an essential business they should be taxed accordingly yes yes I also agree with this I don't think that's a very unpopular opinion though I think a lot of people feel that way yeah I don't know actually this one is an unpopular opinion I thought this was so interesting I like the feeling of being tired what I know. Hell are you talking about? I was thinking about this last night. I was like, maybe they like, you know, feeling accomplished. Maybe they feel that if they're tired, they've gotten a lot done or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I hate that. Feeling. I hate feeling tired. All I mean, I'm so always grouchy. tired. Like it like irritates me when I'm tired. But also the only time I will say it's great to feel tired is like when you get into bed and you this was always my favorite. Yes. You didn't have you knew you didn't have to get up for school the next day, and oh, you didn't yeah. have to set your alarm, and you could just mm-hmm. like and you were tired, and you're like, it's so good that I'm tired because I can do nothing but like yes. be right where I am in my cozy bed. When you're able to get the sleep that you feel like you need, yeah. it is kind of does feel it good feels to good. get it resting though. Yeah. But do you enjoy being tired no. and being like at work and being? Tired? Oh my god, no! It's like so <laughs> annoying. I get annoyed because I don't know. I have like a tired issue. I'm all I've tr- struggled with being tired a lot in my life, and so for mm-hmm. me, it's just like annoying. <laughs> like, yeah. could you not? Like you just woke up an hour ago. Why you Why are you ready for a nap? That's really sad. That's why I definitely feel like this one is unpopular. I don't think many people would agree with that, no. but I kind of get it. Okay, masks are doing more harm than good. Oh, and what's your argument for lights? I, I know I'm I don't have to smell your breath. <laughs> that is true. Plus, I kind of we've been both talking about how we like masks just because oh, so good. if you got a zit like on this second half of your face, you can cover it right up. Oh, God. You don't have to wear makeup. You um, sometimes I just even if I don't care about wearing makeup or not, it's still nice. It feels like kind of like a safety blanket yeah, or does. just a layer of like privacy, per, yeah, privacy and protection. I can mumble shit under my breath yes, or you can like make weird faces annoying people. people. <laughs> yeah, like and if they someone's don't know. annoying me, you can be like, God, get away. like under my breath yeah. and no one knows, you know, <laughs> I don't really see how they're doing harm. I don't really understand that. If anything, I don't, but like, so I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I'd be curious what your reasons are for that. Um, Okay, as a psych major, this one's good. I don't think some of Freud's theories are that bad. Hmm. I don't know. I'd be curious what theories they think of. Yeah. I mean, I I don't, there's like nothing to base that question off of. So I really don't know. I think that Freud is. Freud. Floyd. <laughs> wow. Janelle. I'm still on Floyd Mayweather. Wow. <laughs> That's sad. No, I think that Freud is really. See, it's hard because I think that what he did was really sketchy, but he also was like a huge trailblazer in the mm-hmm. world of psychology, in my opinion, and research. Like what he did, his work is pretty amazing. And like, 
you know, people still reflect on it today. But I think that what he did was also, I mean, he's done a few sketchy things, but I don't uh, know, there's no. Yeah, he was buying there, orphans <laughs> and forcing them to have devices put into their throats yeah. and all kinds yeah, of he's shit. Done, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of like old psych- psychological like experiments. Yeah. So like people mm-hmm. were just kind of savages back right. in the day, honestly. I don't know. I would really like to, to you know, hear more, but I guess I'm going to disagree. Uh, 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 disagree and agree. I don't know. No, that's really hard. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we would need to talk to you more. We need to talk one. to you more. Yeah. Okay. Lobster doesn't taste as good as some people make it dis- or some people describe it. I agree with this. I don't think lobster is good at all. Actually, I'm not a big I shellfish person. I love lobster. It's still like chips. Okay. How about this one? Lemon flavored anything is better than chocolate. I kind of agree with this. I love lemon flavor, and most of the time I'll choose it over chocolate. Um, yikes, that's really stressful. <laughs> I don't know. I really like chocolate. I'm gonna disagree. Although lemons high up there, I love lemons. All right. Yeah. This is interesting. You shouldn't have to buy people presents because they decide to get married or have a baby. I love this one. I've always been like, <laughs> why is it all of a sudden like? Here's your present because you decided to get married. Like <laughs> that's so true. I guess I mean the root behind it though is to like help people out, Start especially there. when you're young. Yeah. Like that's well, the idea is like especially with the baby shower, you you're gonna need a lot of shit. I guess being, I think you should get gifts for having a baby because that's like a serious accomplishment and very stressful and hard on a woman. But I'm like, I don't know about weddings. I'm like, you're just getting married. You're literally getting married. Like, yeah. why do I have to give you a gift? Mm-hmm. No, I, I've always kind of questioned that. I think it's kind of funny yeah. that we do that. It is It is kind of funny. But I enjoy people. I really love buying people baby gifts. Oh, my gosh. I baby will never gifts. complain about it. I will always buy baby stuff for whoever needs it. <laughs> whoever needs it. <laughs> okay. Pickles are literally disgusting. Okay, that's so rude. I know it's like, weird. Are stuff. you kidding me? I pickles love are pickles. Li- How pickles can you eat on pickles? So That's delicious. Sad. I like wearing a face mask out, and I hope some of the rules stay in place after the pandemic. I love. I agree. I like wearing a face mask. I don't, some of the rules I hope stay in place. Yes. I'm not thrilled that like like I couldn't say that I would love to go to a concert and wear a face mask. Like that would kind of. Here's one thing I like. I really enjoy. Well, this isn't anything to do with face masks, but as far as rules post pandemic, mm-hmm. I really don't like shaking people's hands that I don't know or that I don't know where the fuck they have been mm-hmm. all day. I just don't try, especially, I don't even want to say this because like some people might think it's rude, but I don't like to shake men's hands because you never know where they <laughs> stick their <laughs> hands. I've seen men do some questionable things with their hands and I'm always like, I don't know where the fuck you've been. And I always want to wash my hand as soon as I shake a dude's hand. And literally I like turned down a handshake the other day at a meeting and I felt kind of bad, but I was like, you know what? Like, it's just, we can't be doing this. No, yeah. Um, so, and I was like, oh, that's so, kind. that's kind of nice that I don't have to because I never like shaking hands. Mm-hmm. So that's an example of a rule. Okay. I wouldn't mind just like not shaking hands forever because I don't like it. It's I like hugging people I trust and I love and I'm yeah. like, it's just new people. I don't like shaking hands with strangers for okay. some reason. I didn't know that about you. Interesting. All right. What about like a toe touch instead? <laughs> a toe touch. I could, I could like get click down your with heel that. together. I like, just don't really see it. Like, why can't I just be like, what's up? Yeah. You know, I like a little agree. wave. Yeah. I kind of agree. Why it's do we have so to touch weird each that other? society feels like you literally have to do that in order to like, okay, we finally, we got introductions done. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not done unless you like shake hands. <laughs> if I like someone enough to touch them, I want to be able to like hug them anyway. So hmm. yeah, but I now, see that. now everything's weird. So, Okay. This is a good one. Coronavirus didn't break the United States. It only revealed what was already broken. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree. 100% agree. Yeah, I think it really revealed our true colors. I think a lot of uh, stuff has revealed our, our true colors here in the past you know, year or whatnot. But totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, I would agree. How about this one? Friends, the TV show sucks. Agree. Agree. <laughs> it's not that good. It's so overhyped like The Office. Oh, we're going to get so much feedback for that. People who love Friends, it's like a personality oh, trait to I love know. Friends. I know. I know. <laughs> I I have honestly tried to watch it because I love a good show, especially like what everyone else likes. I normally like what everyone else likes, but I've tried to watch Friends and it's like too, the jokes are like too simple that they're not funny to me. I just, I don't get it. And I don't like the laughing. I don't like the live audience. Oh, the, Ugh, the I don't, I just, I'm not into it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I I watched it a long time ago when I was young. Like some of it, I don't remember loving it. I think I did it just because my friend was doing it. <laughs> was watching. It, it was okay. I don't know. It's definitely not like the best thing on earth. Like people act like it's their religion, I which I mean, I guess I can't really hate because whatever, whatever floats. <laughs> You're kind of like that with Will and Grace, I, though. So how much can say, you hate? I was gonna say I can't hate because I'm like I. And that lo- show's very similar. It's it, it. People would say it's very similar. I don't personally think it is. Like I think it's a lot more like 
my type of humor is a lot more like satirical yeah like and there's like you know inappropriate jokes and like mm. they're also like friends is too wholesome for you i really liked will and grace too because it was one of the first shows that showed like lgbtq yes. people like yes. as main characters in the show so that was something i grew up with and like really thought was cool and so i don't know mm-hmm. but yeah i guess i can't talk because i think will and grace is like the greatest thing on earth <laughs> <laughs> okay here is definitely an unpopular one okay uh real christmas trees are ugly i disagree with this because <gasps> the smell ugly. is so good and I don't know if you've ever chopped down a real tree, but that's what my family used to do. We don't have a real tree anymore in my house. I have a fake one just because I'm lazy and I want to save some money. <laughs> it's, it makes a mess. Josh like wigs out on the mess of the oh, tree. Yeah. He's like, oh my God, the pine well, needles are going to, we're going to vacuum them John up every day. is allergic to trees, but I still get a real one every year and I make him put gloves on and help me carry it in. <laughs> that's so funny. But, but it smells so good. It smells so good. And it's like, I don't know, I've done it my whole life. We grew up with real trees and I got to carry that tradition. So I don't know. Real trees are my 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 thing for sure yeah okay quarantine has been a super positive experience in my life and i don't want it to end so this is definitely unpopular but i i can see where some people are coming from especially people that like to be home maybe they didn't like going to a job they want to be by themselves like if you're an introvert i'm an introvert and i don't like i I mean i'm not thriving in this necessarily but like it's not the worst thing in the world for me to be at home and i know some people really really enjoy it Yes, totally. I do. I love my being at home and I, more downtime, I feel like. And a lot of people have time to work on themselves right now. And mm-hmm. maybe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I can see how someone would feel like that, but I disagree with it personally. Yeah, yeah. I could, I could understand that though. This one says, a lot of spiritualists say only love and light, but that's not how the universe works. Oh, like, so they're saying like only love and light. Oh, like, okay, so I get it. There's no like evil, they say, like a lot yeah. of people who are spiritual, like it's just love and light. Yeah. Which I don't think that's necessarily what people that say that mean by it. I think they mean I'm only allowing like positive vibes to come into my space and mm-hmm. I'm going to try to have it's like a more of a goal versus. Yeah. There's only like love and light in the universe. Those love and light, like wishing people love and light and not wishing like bad upon someone. Mm-hmm. But I do get that there. I mean, there's good and evil in the universe. It's the balance. Yes. Of. Life. Yeah, I strongly believe that if there is no evil, then there is no good, right? Like, what is good if there is no bad and vice versa? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I guess I would agree. I mean, yeah, I, I could see how, like, some people would disagree. Would dis- Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I guess it's kind of a personal thing. This one is going to be really controversial. The Beatles are overhyped <gasps> and are actually not that great of a band. Are you kidding? That one I cannot understand oh my gosh like i don't know john legend i'm just alone pissed (laughs) that i really and i think that's because i grew up listening to the beatles so maybe i like really appreciate the music different but the amount of like good music that they have and just the way that they influence yes the music industry and society music industry is unbelievable like Mm -hmm. i don't know i i don't i really disagree with that one the beatles are yeah pretty damn good in my opinion i don't think they're overhyped at all no i don't don't, think they're overhyped at all i mean of course i'm not saying they're like completely void of criticism though of course no there's a lot of like they took this sound from these you know other cultures however a lot like pretty much all music is like ripped off ripped off yeah so it's the truth but i don't know i think they i think they're pretty uh, iconic i think they're pretty i disagree freaking iconic if you ask me this one's good nothing matters at all ever one day we will all be dead and nobody will remember us. I always tell myself this when I'm stressing or anxious. It's not meant to be depressing, but it's liberating. Do you ever hold yourself back? Because what will people think? Always take the risk. I, th- I think a lot of people would agree with this. And I don't get, I guess it's not really an opinion as much as it's like a life philosophy, but I think that's honestly a good way to see I, life. I think that, you know, when she was talking about how when she's stressed out or things are going bad, that she'll kind of like, mm-hmm. it's almost a reality check. I do that too. Yeah. Like if I'm, I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. wait, literally we're just flying on this giant rock that's <laughs> flying through the air by chance, in my opinion, like, mm-hmm. does it matter? It gives you some perspective. It does. I, I agree. That is liberating. Like, I agree with you. I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that living your life with that as like your first thought of like everything is like fuck it it doesn't matter nothing matters like Mm -hmm. i think that could be a bit problematic in my opinion but i definitely think that that's something that is honestly really comforting at the end of the day because it's like what it is what Mm -hmm. it is it is what it is that's the truth and that's what it's like accepting yeah yeah which is hard to do but you know can't control can't control it it is yeah okay this one is interesting too (laughs) it's very simple but soup is a drink 
Do you agree? Do you think soup is a drink? Um, no, soup is not a drink because soup <laughs> often contains like things with you know things like, you could choke on yeah exactly if you can't drink it through a straw i don't think it's a drink unless you take your soup and you blend it up and like make it because like maybe tomato soup could tomato be a soup. drink you could so, drink tomato soup i drink egg drop soup like i don't even use the spoon usually i just kind of like sip that's it. how i am with miso too so hmm. maybe it's a it's drink. kind of a drink but a drink of soup <laughs> Ooh, it's kind of good though actually <laughs> hmm. okay this one i liked Middle school was actually fun and not miserable. High school was way more soul sucking. I agree. I agree. I still didn't love middle school. I hated high school though. Yeah, I hated high school. I liked middle school. I was thriving in middle school. I, yeah, I had a pretty good time in middle school, I think, from what I can remember. Yeah, I would agree. I hated high school with a passion. So (laughs) this one says video rental stores should come back. Streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, etc. barely have enjoyable content. Some people don't even watch movies every month and would probably save money by renting every now and then. And these paid streaming services are like new age cable TV. I agree with this. And I feel like that whole experience of finding some sometimes a classic movie mm-hmm. and just discovering something that you may have missed from like the 90s or mm-hmm. something that opportunity is kind of missed unless it happens to be on your Netflix. Mm-hmm. I miss just going to the movie store. I miss going to Blockbuster. Yeah, getting like a popcorn and a candy. That was fun. But I don't know. I don't think they would survive. People are too lazy. Like if you're if you can watch a movie by clicking a button on your remote. Yeah, they're going to do it. Quick download. Exactly what we want. Yeah. Here's a good one. Elon Musk doesn't deserve the hype. Ooh, Ooh, spicy. spicy. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah. Um, I kind of agree with this. I kind of, I'm starting to, if you would ask me like a year ago, I'd be like, no, he deserves it. But I don't know. I'm kind of getting annoyed with Elon. Yes, I am too. Sorry, I am. Okay, straight up. We were a little bit of like Elon simps for a little while there. Oh, major Elon simp. Like, (laughs) it was pathetic. When we first, yeah, started finding out about a lot of this stuff, we were super into Elon. But over the years, I've just... I have mixed feelings. I'm I do still too. like deciding how I feel. I'm very. I don't think he deserves the hype, though. I don't think he deserves the hype necessarily, and also like, I don't know how much I can trust him because at the end of the day, he's just yeah. one of the like, you know, richest but who top else five. And has like, a rocket and is going to Mars. Like, I'm not so saying what he's, he's doing. Not what he's doing isn't incredible, mm-hmm. but like as far as like he as an Elon himself mm-hmm. overhyped. Like let's yeah. remember he's not building these rockets in his garage. Like he has right. the best of the best to help him do yes. what he's doing. He That's has the point. engineers and the people behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. Totally agree. We'll see. This one says, I don't want to have kids or get married. I want to be free to do whatever I want with my life with no ties. You fucking do that. And I think that society has put such a pressure, especially Mm -hmm. on women for so long to get married and to have kids. Yeah. And you know what? I think that is so long overdue to stop. (laughs) Yeah. For some people, monogamy is just not realistic. No. It's from my favorite movie, Trainwreck. Oh, really? One of my favorite movies. I shouldn't say favorite. (laughs) Top 10. Yeah, no, do whatever the hell you want because it's your life and you should be able to. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) (laughs) All right, next up. All right, this one says, I can't sleep without my socks on. Hmm. I cannot sleep with socks on. Hmm. Like, I cannot sleep. Even last night I had socks on and I woke up after an hour or two of sleeping and took them off because I was like so hot. My favorite is falling asleep with socks on and then kicking them off yes. in my sleep and finding them at the foot of the bed. Yes, I do appreciate that. I love that. Because yes. really it good. feels very like freeing and cold oh, yeah. once you first take them off. And like I love to stick it. a leg out and let your foot breathe for a second. Mm. Iconic. <laughs> All right. This next one says movies low key suck. Can't pay attention for that long. I agree. That's Very wild. strong. I love movies. I don't I like movies. Movie. Can't stand them. Always want to be doing something else. They're too long. <laughs> too long. <laughs> I know. Getting Janelle to sit down for a movie is so it's hard. Too long. It's like, God. Another... I would get so frustrated as a kid. Like, I would be like, well, I want her to watch this like movie, Passport to Paris or something, and she'd be like up doing stuff or like would wander around. Or I was fall like, Janelle. Asleep. <laughs> or yeah, or fall asleep. Okay, this is interesting. Being an A plus student is overrated, and it gives you an identity crisis when you grow up. Ooh, that's, that's spicy. Spicy. I think that. Uh, I think there's a, actually I can think of a lot of people who would like yeah. had A pluses in high school, and now it's like cool. Yeah, like no one cares about that now. I think there's something to be said about that statement. I don't think it's true every single time, yeah, I know. but yeah, mm. I kind of I can see that. Okay, scientists and government should put more money towards researching and exploring the ocean than space. Oh, shit. 
That is an opinion I feel like a lot of our audience actually has. And I totally see the point for that because we have only explored what five yeah. to six now percent of yeah, our oceans. Like nothing, yeah. There's so much on our own planet we have not discovered. And who knows what the fuck could be down there? I mean, aliens could be down there for mm-hmm. all we know. I yeah. kind of understand that argument. But I also think space research is incredibly important. I I understand that argument. My counter argument is like global warming is some would argue so far beyond repair at this point. Like, should we be Mm. focusing on how we can get out of this plan? Like if we're thinking really ahead, like should we be focusing on how we can save ourselves as humanity by like escaping this earth that we have sadly destroyed or are destroying? But we could live mm -hmm. underwater. But like the oceans are like, yeah the The ocean's not going great either it seems like people are not going to get it together so i mean yeah i see your point too i don't know that one's hard okay this one's very spicy and controversial citizens over a certain age should not be allowed to vote i think 65 or 70 should be the limit wow damn that's that's so hard because okay i do see where you're coming from maybe they think you know after a certain point you like don't have the knowledge that you once did or like you're so removed from Mm -hmm. society and like the workplace and everything that you'd be like kind of out of it or like it won't affect you maybe that's the argument but i cannot imagine limiting people like if my grandma was told she couldn't vote she would freak the fuck out absolutely and she's completely with it yeah even though she's older my grandma's like you know super politically involved super aware knowledgeable deserves her vote 100 percent. so i can't agree with that at all i don't agree with that at all i understand kind of the point of like do we want like all these people who are like super like let's okay this is a total judgment i'm not saying this is true but like for example if everyone who's old is now like uneducated and doesn't understand the world like do we want them casting their vote well i think that maybe there's like a small handful of people who may fall into that category Mm -hmm. but like Mm -hmm. overall i think that the majority of people who do vote do generally know Mm -hmm. what's going on and therefore like eh, there's a few outliers but there's outliers in every age i mean there's god i remember people in college back not this just election but the one before that were like saying nonsense about like Mm. they had no idea who they were voting for um so i don't think it has anything to do with age no i think that's straight up just age discrimination too and it's straight up taking rights away from people which i'm definitely against i believe that if you want to cast your vote without being educated or whatever like that even though i don't agree with that i think that's still your right to do but i'm hoping that there are more people than not who you know actually know what's going on so that's my opinion that's my opinion that's my opinion okay this is a controversial one in my personal friend group and it is you should have kids after you get married Mm. that's a strong opinion i don't know why it matters yeah i don't really i can see why there's benefits to both i mean i don't see why marriage really plays that big of a factor i just can't have like just can't imagine like having an opinion on that like telling other people what Mm -hmm. to do like i just don't care care. if you want to get married great if you don't want to get married great if you want to have a kid and never get married i know a lot of parents that aren't married that are wonderful parents and marriage wouldn't have made a different for difference for them and i gotta say like not that I have kids or anything, but marriage did not change my life in any way yeah. other than the way we like file our taxes and do health insurance and yeah. shit, you know? Right. It didn't change our relationship or, or our ability to be parents, mm-hmm. I don't think. Right. Okay. So I am not excited for Christmas this year. I feel like the Grinch, but it's just not the same. I feel like a lot of, that's definitely probably a popular opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I understand that. I really do. I, I, I'm I trying to like not admit that and be like, no, I'm so excited for Christmas, which I am. Like I said, I'm a little village. I got my tree. Yeah. I'm all cute about that. But it does feel weird. It, it doesn't does. feel like Christmas. No, it doesn't. Especially without being able to see family. It's terrible. And like, honestly, what is time right now? Like, that's the thing is like time is so irrelevant. I feel like like we were sick or, you know, the country has or the world has been in a pandemic since early this year and i feel like time has just stopped since yeah and it i don't know mm-hmm. it's like i don't i, well, I, I barely think, didn't even get a summer <laughs> like, i know and yeah not seeing your family is like such a big part of that because seeing our families and reconnecting is such a big part of the holiday mm-hmm. season that it almost feels and it's yeah it's just depressing a lot of people are in a rough spot mm-hmm. i said the same thing on twitter when i was decorating my tr- my tree in our house just it felt weird because i just know how hard it is for mm-hmm. everybody right now and it feels like it's hard to harness that joy, but I'm gonna try really hard because I think it's important. 
I don't know. I don't know why I feel Christmas is important to my life. No, honestly, I completely understand that. Um, I've got to have some happiness here. Like Christmas really does like Christmas music. There's like Mm -hmm. a whole thing about it for me, at least personally. Like I really do love it. And it it gives me like such a nostalgic feeling that I really can't find anywhere else. And it's Mm -hmm. honestly kind of bummed me out that I feel like I'm not getting that same feeling Mm -hmm. that I usually get. But at the same time, like... Yeah, it's okay. I this even thought about hard. not putting up Christmas lights or my tree this year because I was like, I think a lot of people I don't know if anyone's going to come over and even see them. But I just put them up anyway for myself. And I am really enjoying just like when our lights are off in the house <laughs> at night, just looking at all the lights and looking at my little village. And, it, you know, if that's all it does, it just brings me some joy. Then mm-hmm. fine. You know, True at that. the end of the day, I'll take joy in whatever shape I can. No, seriously, you got to find it anywhere nowadays. OK, here's a last one. Okay. We're going to end off with a controversial one. Kind of uh, straight up, kids should not be invited to weddings, yes or no. Here's my thing. I don't really care what anyone else does with their wedding. And I wouldn't go to someone else's wedding. And if there was kids there, be like, oh, I can't believe there's children in this vicinity. I'm not going. (laughs) But at the same time, I did not have children at my wedding. And someone tried to bring their kids, tried to bring like three kids to my wedding. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to say no. That's That's first of all, really expensive. Plus, they'll be the only kids there. And they'll just be like running around getting lost. And maybe things would have been different if I had more kids in my family. That's the thing is mm. no one I know has had kids. None of my friends have kids. I'm not like someone's auntie. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, there's no one I would really want there. So it was like some randos kids. So we made that decision. However, I could see us making a different decision later on in our life. And I don't think, you know, especially if you have you have kids, yeah. you probably want them to be at your wedding. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, no, I, I personally would never have kids at my wedding just because that's like not my vibe. You don't <laughs> but even know any. I don't know any kids. But even if I did, like, I don't think, I don't know. I, yeah. It's like an adult thing. Like, cause yeah. I, there's a lot of drinking. It got crazy at my wedding. Of, and like, it's expensive. Like you said, yes. honestly, and it's expensive. I don't know. Like, eh. the thing is, is that some people don't really keep good track of their kids during the wedding or mm-hmm. like discipline them properly. No. Like it's like, it's just disrespectful not yes. to make sure your kids are on their best behavior. at someone else's big day. Great point. Yeah. So it yeah. depends on the parents and like what well types behaved of kids. kids, but kids that are like running around sticking their finger in my cake that I spent a thousand dollars on. No, I don't want that. Damn, a thousand dollar cake. Or plucking. I don't know how much Ooh. cakes are. Whatever, a few hundred bucks. I don't know. That was, or picking off my flower centerpieces. I you guess know, someone's like, was probably a thousand. We got a free one with our hotel, so I don't know how much. Oh they hell were. yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just. I don't, I don't, I don't know if I trust all these kids around in the wedding. <laughs> Let us know what you guys think on all of these unpopular opinions and we might have to make this a whole segment you guys will have to let us know if you enjoyed hearing these because i personally love to watch these types of videos Me too. i have been watching luke alexander a lot lately i don't know how many of you guys watch his videos he's from australia and he's so good and i got this idea from him because he does this all the time i just want to say that before i go mm-hmm. okay <laughs> well shout job, out to job. luke alexander yeah, shout out to you thanks for the inspiration on this this was super fun but that's it for us today guys uh, we will be back. I know last week we said we were coming back this week with a very requested episode. We have decided to put that on hold until yeah. after the holidays and stuff because yeah. it's a serious topic and we just want to be in the best headspace and like do a great job on it. So yeah. we're going to wait till January. Next week we'll do something else fun, mm-hmm. you know, get in the Christmas vibe, vibe some more. Yeah. Hopefully we're, you know, lifting your guys' spirits a little bit and just having some fun. That's what this show's all about. That's what the show's about. Yeah. It's been really fun for us. Great way to kind of take our mind off things. And it is. I love our little tree. It turned out really good. Isn't it so cute? It's so cute with the little glittery Christmas skirt. Hello. We yes. love her so much. Oh, it's so good. What should we name this tree? Leave a comment below. <laughs> Tell us what to name our tree. <laughs> That's it, guys, for the sesh. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you. And we'll see you on the next sesh. But until then, keep, keep it fresh. fresh.